We're talking here with Stephanie Nixon um, from University of Toronto. And Stephanie, I guess for starters, tell us, tell me a little bit about yourself and about what you're presenting here today at the conference. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, I've been an HIV researcher and clinician and activist for about 15 years. So I started out as a physiotherapist working at a hospital that had a big HIV program and uh, quickly became uh, quite involved with the HIV community, was groomed by the HIV community and, and HIV activists, and that's where I got my real schooling was in the early days. And over the years, in the presence of treatment, the great news is people are living longer, but with all kinds of ups and downs in their lives. And rehabilitation is designed to help people with the ups and downs in their lives resulting from different medical challenges. So what I've been doing for the last many years is has been concerned with what are those ups and downs, what are the best ways to deal with them from policy and program and practice perspectives yeah. in Canada? More recently, I've become very interested in what this means in Southern Africa, where treatment is now becoming widespread. So I've been hearing um, a lot about something that's called Pause Brain. You also wrote it in your abstract. Can you explain to me what Pause Brain is? Pause Brain is an experience that we've been hearing from various HIV community members is something that's becoming more and more of a concern. And what they're talking about is an experience of fuzziness sometimes. People describe it sometimes as subtle forgetfulness, um, word finding problems, remembering names. It can come on slowly, but it's something where you're just not quite as sharp as you used to be. Or concentration. People would say, I used to be able to sit in a meeting and I could take the notes and I could facilitate the meeting at the same time, I, I just can't do that anymore. I know my limits. Or I can do that, but only for two hours, and then I'm exhausted. I have to go home. And this idea of pause brain um, is now being understood as having cognitive components, so the remembering uh, and the concentration, having behavioral components, and also having motor components, actually. And by motor components, I mean some challenges with fine motor skills, like writing, or just feeling a bit more clumsy. I've had people say, yeah, I bump into things more than I used to. So this constellation of symptoms that um, people in the medical world would call neurocognitive challenges, so neurocognitive challenges, that is what some people uh, bubbling up from the community are calling pause brain. Are there any interventions that are being used to respond to hand for people living with HIV? My understanding is that it's early days, um, but that the answer is yes. And it's not starting from scratch, it's actually borrowing from some of the brain fitness interventions that already are gaining um, sort of traction just with aging populations in general. Okay. You know the idea of do a crossword puzzle every day or do a Sudoku every day. Mm -hmm. um, there, I know of at least one effort that's going on with some folks here in Toronto, Sean Rourke and others leading it, uh, that's looking at an online brain fitness program and assessing it for its effectiveness and actually helping people to manage their hand. And one thing that we're hearing anecdotally is that it helps, but the next big step is to actually assess assess this scientifically to see is this a real change or is this just a uh, placebo. Well, thank you Stephanie for like um, simplifying something that's so complex. So um, we hope that to see more of you at the conference talking about this and um, thank you for coming here today.